Hey guys, welcome to a video on this artificial intelligence tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about the Dolly 2 and the Dolly uh, Mini model. So we're actually going to talk about the architecture. We're going to see what is Dolly 2 model, the architecture, how is it built up and so on. Because this is the state of the art uh, neural networks in, in within like deep learning and so on. This is how we go from text to actually like generate images from the text that we pass into the prompt or like pass into our model. But first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button under the video here. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here are actually like subscribing to your channel. It's just a single click and it just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member of the channel, I can help you out in your own projects. If you have some problems and so on, I can help you out and give some guidance if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So first of all here, let's just jump straight into the model architecture. Look at like what does this Dolly 2 uh, model here look like? What's the architecture? What are they trying to do to actually like, create this like text encoding? Like how can we go from text to actually like, generate images from that text that we pass into our model? So here we have this paper here, hierarchical text conditional image generation with clip latents. So in this video here, we're going to talk about like the training process, inference process, and we're also going to talk about this clip method here that they use. So this is the contrastive learning image uh, pre-training. We can use this for a lot of different kind of things as we're going to talk about. But down here at the bottom, we can actually like, see the architecture here of the neural network or like the model that they have created. So they actually like, have several different kind of neural networks doing different things as we're going to talk about. So above the dotted line here is actually like the training process or like the training architecture for this model. And then the lower part here is how we can actually like use it for inference and how we can actually like generate an image by only like passing in a text or like as we can see here to the left, a cog you playing a flame throwing trumpet. We pass in the text to our neural network. Then we need to decode our text and then we actually like need to get them into like image embeddings, how we can do like image decoding at the end here. So we can actually like generate images from text but first of all here, let's talk about like the clip here as we're going to talk about in the next slide, because first of all, it actually uses the clip methods uh, to do this neural network training. So now we're going to have a slide here about the clip method that I just mentioned in the previous slide. So basically here, the idea of the clip method is to have two neural networks. So we're both training a neural network for the images, but also the captions. So we can actually like have like, for example, an image with a, a dog inside of it. Then we'll have like a caption describing what is inside of this image here. And then we can actually like uh, create or like train a neural network for the text encoder and also for our image encoder. So we both have a neural network for images and then for our captions as well. And then here we can see that during training, the two networks, they try to adjust their parameters so that similar images and descriptions produce similar embeddings. So we want to go from images and text to acts like embeddings. So we can work with these embeddings later on in our neural networks. So then we can actually like generate our text, get some embeddings from our text, and then we can actually like match that embedding to some images that we're training on neural network on. And then from that, those image um, embeddings, we can actually like to have a decoder for our image. So we can embed or like we can decode those image embeddings. And then we can actually like create images from just passing in text to our model so it does not need it any like it doesn't need like training data to be labeled for a specific application so we can actually like, just have a bunch of images uh, with some descriptions and so on like really loose descriptions that can be found on the web for example as it's written down here at the bottom so basically we just we just have a huge number of images uh, in our data set we have the corresponding like loose description of like what is actually like in this image it could be for example we have an image we have a label or like we have a description under that image saying like this dog here is laying on some grass it is a, like a, a black dog laying on some grass a grass or something like that and then we'll just have a huge data set with all these things and then we can basically just train our model with it so we're both text encoding with image encoding then we're training this clip model here and then we can then use that later on to actually like generate new images from text or like from prompts that we pass in. So after we have done here and explained the clip method, um, Dolly here also uses another machine learning technique, which is called diffusion, which is kind of like a generative model that learns to create images by gradually like noising and also denoising its training examples. It can be a bit of compared to like, for example, autoencoders where we have like, for example, like very vari variational autoencoders and so on, where we actually just transform the input data to some embedding representation. It could be our like embedding vector if we want to reduce the dimensions or we just want to like represent our data um, with like smaller dimensions. Then we can actually like, just train an autoencoder and then we actually like, have our encoder and then we get our embeddings and then we have can have a decoder on the other end as well. 
So this is basically what Disney will never hear does over and over again, both for the text and also for uh, the images. But here, when we have actually like transform our input data into an embedding representation, then we can re reproduce the original data from that in, uh, in embedding information, where we, which we can do by uh, having this image decoder or like our text decoder at the end. The basic idea here is that Dolly trains a clip model based on images and captions, as we already talked about. Then it uses that clip model to actually like train the diffusion model. Basically, like the diffusion model uses the clip model to generate the embeddings for the text prompt and also the corresponding images to that text prompt. And then it tries to actually like generate the images that correspond to the text uh, that we passed into our prompt or like through a model. So this is basically what we already went over. So now we know like how this architecture here for the Dolly act like works on a more like high level um, overview. So now we'll basically just jump into the Dolly 2 website here. We can see some examples like what are we actually like able to do with this model. Then we're going to see Dolly like the Dolly uh, mini model, which is just a smaller model with like less parameters and so on. But the idea is the same where we go from inputting a command or like some text into our prompt and then we actually like just pass that through our model and then at the end it will create an image from that text that we passed into our model. So here we can see the first here, the front page of the website is Dolly is a two new AI system that can create realistic images and art from description in natural language. So this is a really huge step in, inside of like deep learning and artificial intelligence in, in, in general and can be used for a lot of different kind of applications um, and so on. So here we can see we can join the waitlist for the Dolly 2 model. The open, open model here is actually like the Dolly Mini, so you can play around with that as well. I'll show you just in a second how you can access that model and actually like try to play around with it and so on, where you need to join the waitlist if you want to have the Dolly 2 uh, to do model. Then we can also do some exploration. We can watch the video, we view the research paper and so on. So down here we can see that we can create an original realistic image and art from text descriptions. It can combine concept, attributes, and style. So basically here we can just have a text description and then we can actually like also have some other different kind of like attributes uh, describing what are like, for example, an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style. And then we can see the output over here to ride from Dolly. We also get some other different kind of examples so we can actually like have a lot of variation in those images. But as, as we can see here, like we only pass in these words here to our axe like model. And this is the output that we get out from a model over here to ride. So this is actually like a really cool model and it's just state of art. We get really high details and even like the quality here of the images are really good. We can pass in a lot of different kinds of things. We can also have like, for example, uh, a teddy bears here mixing sparkling chemicals as, as mad scientist as a 1990s uh, Saturday morning cartoon. And then we're going to have some other different kind of examples. But again, when we can see these images here, we just get really nice details in the images. So this is what the model outputs. It's really, really nice that we can get these things done. So here we can just see again all the details. We get just get a lot of different kind of examples by just passing in this text to our model. We can also try some other different kind of things. A bowl of soup here that looks like a monster. And then we can actually see we get a bowl of soup looking like a monster knitted out of wool. So that is actually like also really nice. So we can even like pass in details about the materials and so on. Um, that that it's uh, that it's made of like who can even imagine like a bowl of soup that looks like a monster uh, knitted out of wool so that is just pretty nice we also get some other different kind of examples down here is actually like some really cool and funny examples that we get we can also make realistic edits to existing images from a natural language caption it can add and remove elements while taking like shadows reflections and textures into account so here to the left, we pass in our original image and then we want to like, for example, add or remove elements, objects in our image. We just want to get some more variety um, and so on. So here we can see an example over here to the right. We see some different kind of examples where we are actually like moving this flamingo. So we're just moving it around here in the image. We can also take some other different kind of options. So we can actually like specify where do we want to place it in the image here. We can even see that this is not even like a toy anymore. It's in like a real, real animal in our image. So this is our original image to the left. Then we basically just pass in that we want to uh, add a flamingo and also the, add the area where we want to add it. And this is the Dolly 2 edit that we get over here to the right. We can also get some other different kind of examples here. So here we can, for example, have like a corgi. We can add that to the image here or like the painting here in the background. We can also move it over here. Again, we get some different kind of options from the Dolly 2 model. So 
this is just really crazy what this model here is capable of doing and this is only the start within like the journey towards like artificial general intelligence we can also take an image and create different variations of it in inspired like by the original so if you want to change the image if you want to get some variations in your images you can basically just take your image and then you can just get some variations from the dolly 2 model so here we just have this image here we can get some different kind of like variations over here so this is the output from the dolly 2 model again we can also have these birds and we can get some variations and differences uh, or like just other images here with the same kind of birds just in another image another scene and so on so you can use for a lot of different kind of things we can even see here it looks pretty funny like these images here both the colors the details it's just a really cool um, network we can see here that Dolly 2 has learned the relationship between images and the text used to describe them. It uses a process called fusion as we already went over in the slide, which starts with a pattern of random dots and gradually alters the pattern towards an image when it recognizes specific aspects of that image. So this is what we're talking about when we actually like denoise and, and, and add noise to our images. So this is what diffusion is, where here we can see that we just have these patterns of random dots because our images are actually like really noisy and then we can actually like gradually alter the pattern towards an image when it recognizes like specific aspects it could be like for example a car a dog and so on so here we start with really blurry images and so on and then when we start to get some texture in the images it will just start like denoising those models with the diffusion process um, as they use and then we can actually like generate like these really nice images that we have just seen here we can see some other different kind of examples. There's also a Dolly 1 version, uh, which is from uh, 2021, I can see. And here we have the Dolly 2 version. We can just see we get way more details, a better quality, like way higher accuracy, like way better like image resolution, better accuracy. Also, the details is just like so, so nice. Here we can see the text prompt or like the text that they put through the model, a painting of a fox sitting in a field at sunrise in the style of Claude Monet. So you can even like take in different kind of like artists and draw images in the same style as different kind of artists. So it has also learned that. So this is a really general model. Like you can just pass in an image, say draw this image here, or like pass in the text describing something, draw this as this and this artist and so on. So this is actually like a really, really nice model. Dolly 2 is preferred over Dolly 1, which is pretty obvious to have a version 2 over a version 1 for its caption matching and photorealism when evaluators were asked to compare 1000 image generation from each model. So here we see some different kind of like uh, things down here at the bottom. But now we're seeing the main thing that Dolly 2 here can do when we actually like use this model. So here we can see the paper of the Dolly 2 here. We can see the hierarchical uh, text conditional image generation with clip latents. This is the paper here, it's 27 pages long. If you want me to go more into details with this uh, with this paper here, talk about like what we're doing in the paper, more about details about the architecture and so on, definitely throw a comment down in the comment section. Tell me if you want to know more about these things. If we should dive deep, uh, like more deep into what these things are, the method, what they're using, some comparisons they're doing, and so on. So definitely throw a comment if you're interested in that, and I should make a video um, about that as well. So now we're going to look at the Dolly Mini model, which is also available for you. So go down in the description here or for a link, you can or you can just Google like Dolly Mini. You'll go in, you can actually like access this app here where you will get a, um, a command prompt. So basically here, or like a text prompt. So basically here, you just pass in the text. So this is from uh, Dolly Mini here. We can see the model. Then they have created an app where we can actually like get some different kind of examples. So here we have the Dolly Mini model, AI model generating images from any prompt. So basically we can just pass in our text of what do we want to generate an image of. So here I passed in the text dog sleeping on a mountain. So basically we just want a dog sleeping on top of a mountain and we want to generate an image of that. So here we can actually see the results are not that good as the Dolly 2 examples that we saw. Also the examples we saw are the actually like just the, the best like the best examples that you can get. Of course they're just showing on the website the best examples from the model that I have generated and so on. But here we can see we get a bit worse performance it is not that big of a model it's actually like a really small model compared to the dolly 2 model um with a, not that many parameters but here we can see we still get details we still get a dog we get a mountain the dog is sleeping as well we don't get as many details as we do with the dolly uh, with the dolly 2 model but as uh, also like obvious but this model here is accessible for everyone you can basically just 
Google it, you can find it, you can pass in your own text and it will generate the images. We can even like take a screenshot if you want to save some of the images. We can also make them larger. We can also see like the image resolution is not that high on the Dolly uh, mini model. We can also see another example here with a whale on grass with a hat. So basically we just want a whale uh, on some grass with a hat. We can see here, we actually like, have a whale uh, on some grass, some kind of a, like grass structure, is at least it's green. We have some texture and then we also have a hat on top of the whale. Down here, we can see that we don't have a hat on top of the whale. We actually like, just have grass, whale and hat. But it takes in the different kind of like attributes or in the text that were passed in to it and then it just generates images. This model here is not perfect and it's not any near uh, any near the full Dolly 2 uh, Dolly 2 model which will have more like attributes and it can describe images better and also draw uh, the correct images. So if you pass this Dolly 2 uh, model here with the whale and grass with a hat then you will actually get the hat on top of the whale and also more details both in the whale but also on the grass. We can see down here it draws two whales. This is kind of like a funny whale down here at the bottom. We can see two whales are like kind of mixed. So we get some odd and some 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 bad results in here um, as well with this model. We also have a, like a really odd whale up here. We also have a hat here. Maybe this is actually just a whale hat. So this is just a hat that whales are wearing. These are hats we are wearing, but who knows what hat or like what type of hat whales are actually like wearing. So this could actually like be the correct prediction or like the correct image for this caption but down here we can see we have a hat we have some grass here at the bottom and then we have a whale so this is a really nice model it can be used for a lot of different kind of things you can play around with it yourself type in some other different kind of commands if you have some funny things that you want to test out to actually like see how is it able to generate those images also if you want to challenge the model with some more difficult stuff than just a whale and grass and hat which should be like kind of like obvious things so if you want to challenge it, go in here and try to do it yourself. Also comment down in the comment section if you want me to go into more details with both the architecture, the paper that they released with all the different kind of methods that they're using for creating this model. And then at the end here, I'm just going to show you this script here. So it actually like provides some um, how the inference pipeline for the Dolly mini model. So this is basically if you're using Python in you, if you want to run the inference pipeline um, in Python in your own code, you can actually like do that. Here they basically just created an app on top of this code that they have in here. So basically here we just need to pat, like load in our model, specify the path to our model, have some text prompts that we pass into our model. We have some setup that we need to do first of all as well. We need to import our clip processor and transformations, our model and so on. So I will create another video where I go more in details with with this code here and how we can actually like do this inference pipeline here in Python. But that's for another video guys so thank you guys for watching this video here and again remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video here it just really helps me and the youtube channel out in a massive way i'm also doing a computer vision tutorial and a deep learning tutorial where we talk about basic image operation camera calibration stereo vision and so on we're combining like computer vision with deep learning we also have some uh, point cloud processing and so on but if you're interested in that computer vision tutorial i linked it up here or else in the see next video guys bye for now